Hundreds of millions of Chinese citizens still use costly informal credit where they lack access to a formal financial system. For many, the financial data providing credit scores to obtain fair price loans are just not available. Joining me is Martin Trezempa of the Institute to discuss his latest paper on China's credit system. Thank you for joining me, Martin. Thanks for having me. So what is the underlying pr problem here? Why do so many Chinese people lack access to the formal credit system? This is ultimately a problem of credit histories. And this is because formal credit from the banking system to individuals in China is something that's very new. So in the United States, we've been doing this for about 150 years, a lot of experience, people have been borrowing, and this data is collected and shared with other lenders. So if you borrow from Chase, then Wells Fargo also knows if you've been paying back the loan. So in the US, only about 20% of people lack a credit history. In China, that number is about 70% many multiple times uh, the entire population of the U.S. even. And this is because they only started to share this information among banks about 20 years ago. So what's the economic impact of this problem? The impact of this problem hits most on the poor, rural, and elderly, the people who are most vulnerable in the society, because they're the ones who are least likely to be covered by a credit history of the formal financial system. And ultimately, the impact of this it, on the macroeconomic side is that you have less entrepreneurship, you have less ability for people to weather shocks that lower or raise their income, and you have less urbanization. So what can Chinese officials do to fix this problem? Uh, what needs to happen is both official action and private sector working together. So what I recommend in my analysis is that we first begin by clarifying the rules around sharing data, making sure that companies are protecting consumer privacy, they're not losing data that puts people at risk for identity theft, and then you have to have partnerships between the technology companies that have a lot of data on people that if you don't have a credit history you can use other information to try and tell how likely is this person to pay back the loan and if you combine that with the capital that banks have the money that they have to lend you have a really powerful way to jump start leapfrog and have people generate credit histories that they can then use to borrow from banks in the future will this be enough i think this is part of the pro part of the solution but ultimately what we're gonna need is a really good technical system that combines together this, these data from disparate sources and allows people to shop around for loans. This is a much longer term idea that probably should be decentralized because it'll be harder for hackers to come in, say like Equifax, around 143 million Americans had their data lost. You don't want all this data housed in one place, but designing that's very complicated. I have provided some ideas of a way forward in the paper. Interesting. Thank you. For, thank you, Martin. Thank you. For more information, please go to PIIE.com and you can read Martin's paper on China's, for, uh, on China's financial credit system.